for being here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a project we did last summer uh, with uh, Sean. He was uh, an intern at Jonah Platforma. Um, I'm just going to introduce the team a little bit, and then we can go into the presentation itself. So Sean did most of the heavy lifting here. I worked with him, Hans Frederick, myself, and Anil. Um, both Sean and Anil can be here. Sean is uh, working on his PhD, and Anil is in customer escalation right now. So I will uh, present this work for you guys. Um, to, to really understand how we do the personas, first I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, insight on the product itself so that you guys can understand how uh, our users are actually using our product. Then I'll talk to you about the first set of personas that we developed with Cooper. And then I, I will uh, go into some of the details of uh, you know, the techniques that you can find in our paper. So first, I'll introduce you what Platform is. It's a big data discovery tool. It lets you basically explore any size of data. Uh, most of our customers have clusters, and they run massive MapReduce and Spark jobs. So they can go from 10 to uh, 10,000 nodes. Uh, you know, that's the new way of storing a lot of data in these days. Uh, basically, Platform is a full stack system. It, it lets you uh, access the raw data and also produce a visualization on top of it. Uh, the idea is that you can do that in the same environment, so it's a full stack system. I'll, I'll show you a little bit some of the screens so you guys can understand how this works actually. So this is where you ingest the data in Pad4. It's uh, similar to, let's say, Excel on steroids. Uh, there's a lot of functionality in here, uh, ETL, and anything that you would do usually in a database system when you're cleansing the data. Then there's another part of the UI where you let a business analyst basically pick fields, dimension, measures that they want to bring in a session where they will analyze that data. Um, what's particular about Platform is all the data is, is in, in memory, so it's super fast, and you can basically uh, do iterative exploration of the data on top of massive amounts. So we're talking petabyte, petabytes of data here. And finally, you usually have a business analyst that is uh, used to tools like Tableau or Burst or Click. So this is our visual query editor. It's a click and drag interface where you can basically uh, build up uh, visualizations. So the, the company is about four years old. And the first thing we did is a contract with Cooper. So Cooper came in and did a project with us for two, two months. And they interviewed a bunch of customers Finally, came up with a, uh, a series of uh, personas that we can uh, we wanted to use to build a product. Uh, Platform is a full stack system, so we have a lot of different people using our product, uh, from data admin, data, IT people, data scientists. Uh, those are all the people responsible for the data itself, and then you have the business uh, analysts, the people that are bringing value with that data. So. You can imagine a business analyst doesn't really understand how the, the data got to her, but she knows how to you know, work with KPIs and do reports and build uh, reports for a boss, let's say the CEO or the VP of marketing. So those were kind of two sets of personas we were working with, uh, the technical and also the business personas. At the end, we decided to concentrate on four. So these are our per, uh, primary personas. Lewis and Jeffrey are the technical side of the house. And then we have uh, Mary Beth and also Deborah. So Mary Beth doesn't really understand how the, got, the data got to her, uh, but she knows how to you know, ex extract uh, insights out of the fields like dimension and, and measures. Uh, Deborah is mostly doing presentations uh, with all the data sh that uh, Mary Beth presents to her. Uh, so so who, who came to the product? So we, we decided to build this product so that it was easy to traverse all these different stacks. So usually in the, the BI community, there's people responsible for the database, then there's people responsible for build, building cubes or representation of the data, and then there's business users that come in and try to analyze that data that's been served to them. So it's pretty waterfall. In most of the cases, there's tickets involved and people want access to new dimensions. They have to go to the IT guys and there's a process of doing it. So. What we set forward doing is creating a, you know, a platform where a, the same user could do that in one environment. After collecting data for about three years, so the product's been out there for two years, the company's four years old, uh, Sean came on board as an intern last summer, and we decided to go and try to see if we could reverse engineer how personas are built uh, using machine learning techniques. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking to you guys about this, uh, this morning. Uh, 
something really important to note is this is not automatic. You can't automate this. You actually need user experts that will be uh, there in the process to analyze the type of data that's extracted from the data itself. Uh, just a little bit of touchdown on how we collected this data. So this is one part of the UI platform. A couple of controls, buttons, uh, and you know, drop downs. And here at the bottom, you can't really see this, but it's all the data we're collecting. So we're capturing petabytes of data. A uh, lot of time, customer ID, user ID, event type, and whatever uh, the event carries with him. So we call that a payload. It's pretty dense. Uh, it's really fun to analyze, and we're analyzing it that that data with our product itself, which is which is pretty cool. Um, so for this paper, what we did is we looked at about 30 companies that were sending telemetry to us. A total of 2,400 users. Uh, about 40k uh, click stream. So a click stream is basically a session. It's a moment where a user starts an action and completes it and then goes away for 30 minutes. So that's what we consider a click stream. Uh, and on top of that, we basically collected 3.5 million clicks that were part of these click stream. And there's around 1,200 distinct UI event in Platforma. So the first stage is basically doing some, some clustering. So we decided to use uh, words pairwise hierarchical clustering. What's good about this one is uh, it basically every level that you merge, you're creating similarities between the click streams. So we're looking at all the clicks and the click, click streams and seeing how similar they are to each other. So this, this is kind of the output. Uh, at the bottom, it's obviously pretty dense because you have the 40K click streams. And as you go up, you are basically merging the, 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 the sessions based on their similarities. Uh, this is a great graph to show you a little bit how Platform actually works. There's two main workflows, loading and transforming data on the left. And on the right, we have visualization of data. The hard part here is based on the product that you have, if you have telemetry like this, is setting the cut line. So where will you cut this tree basically to extract the clusters that you need that will be the canonical workflows that your users are actually doing in your product. So what we did is we tried different levels, four, five, and we went a little lower. And uh, w this is where the human really comes in, is you need to look at actually what's in the clusters and seeing the frequency of the events themselves. So you know when we segregated on 10 clusters, we went back and looked at each of these clusters and saw what were the frequency of some of the actions to make sure that they were different and uh, different enough so that they would be kind of a canonical workflow. Uh, on top of that, just to make sure you're doing this correctly, uh, we added uh, this, this other uh, dimension to figuring out if we have the right cluster is looking at some uh, key events in our product like creating a data set, modifying a data set, viewing a visualization, modifying a visualization, and basically plotting the frequency of these actions for each clusters to make sure that we have a, a good distribution. Um, so this is specific to each product, and you actually need people that understand these products to, to tell you like if, if this is a, a good uh, clustering uh, grouping. So these are the 10 uh, clusters that we came out with uh, after analyzing this with Inside Platform. And they're pretty, pretty straightforward, modifying a data set, creating a data set. We use the, vo the word visboard. That means basically a report, uh, of a board of visualizations. Uh, segments, lenses are our way of creating a data mart in memory. And the graph on the side here, every cluster is, is basically a dot. And on the x-axis, you have the average time. And on the y-axis, you have the length and clicks. So it's good to see that also there's like a, a good wide distribution of the time of these workflows. So they, they're not as uh, you know, centered in one, one location, which we could indicate that there's an over, uh, over clustering uh, of that, um, that cluster. So the next step basically is to look at these clusters against all the users themselves. Um, if we had built a product that had a lot of silos in it, uh, given persona would be doing maybe one or two clusters. But because we went and created a product where we wanted people to traverse the, all the different workflows, uh, we, we had to find a way to distribute the soft population of our users. Uh, Sean came, came out with this idea of using the mix model. 
Uh, it's used a lot in biology to uh, extract the different subpopulation based on some uh, key factors. So we, we use the same model for, uh, for our users. And basically the way it works is you set a group of subpopulation and you try to fit every user in that population. Um, in some cases it fits pretty good. And the way it works is basically it can predict the percentage of chances of a specific user of producing a specific workflow. So these are simple example like you can see user one, two, three, they kind of have the same ratio of red and uh, yellow and that creates a persona. There's a certain signature there that creates a persona. Um, with the mixing model, what's a mi mix, mix model, what's good also is certain users, as in real life, are not always a personas, but could be multiple personas. So uh, the model lets you expose that by having a user be 60% persona A, 20% persona C, and 40% uh, persona B, right? So th again, this is where you need a human to help you here. Because you need to uh, figure out like how many subpopulation do you want to sample over. So we tried four, we tried five, we tried seven, six, and we were looking at these distribution charts to see if there was like actual good uh, distribution. Uh, it turns out that uh, Cooper was pretty good. He he predicted four of our five uh, personas that came out of our exercise: Mary Beth, Deborah, Lewis, and Jeffrey. Um, what's uh, particular to plot four is that you see Maribeth should have been concentrated only at the top. She's a BI analyst, so she should be only working inside visualizations. But in fact, she's a little bit modifying data set and she's also creating data mods, which uh, for us means that you know we build this platform that a BI analyst can actually go in and do some of the heavy lifting that Lewis would normally do. He's the IT guy. And you can see that most of his concentrations are in creating, modifying, and building lenses, and yet he is also building visualization. So it's it's kind of a really interesting to see, like because the tool is made in such a way that different personas are actually exercising workflows that you would not expect them to be doing. Um, Jeffrey is really uh, our BI uh, expert. He's a lot more technical, and he's doing a lot of iteration. He's building data models and visualizing visualizing them. So this is the middle part that you see here. A persona that uh, Cooper was not able to predict was Dave, which is a subset of Jeffrey, but has a, a, a high tendency of using a, a, a feature called segment, which is all about uh, user behavior analysis. So uh, we put a couple of these features in platform not knowing if uh, people would actually use them. Uh, and it, it turned out like someone showed up to the, the plate and started using them. So Dave is, is that guy. I can show you a little bit of also, the other part of making sure you have the right distribution when you pick the number of sub subpopulation is looking at how many of the, the canonical workflows, uh, the chances of them are happening for each persona. And you can see we have a good distribution. There is not an, over, uh, an overplotting of two personas. Uh, I could go into details of each persona comparing the graphs versus what Cooper did, but I, I don't think this is a good use of time. Um, so you can see that here. Something we did after, which is what came out of this research, is like, well, let's look at these personas and see how individuals in company are actually mapping to these. So this is a good way also to verify if the, the sampling is good, if the subpopulation number is, is good. You're, you should have a lot of unique colors and a little bit of these personas that are jumping around, like you can see right as a little bit of them. Um, another aspect to this that's really interesting is comparing the behaviors of two companies. So Opal is kind of an old school BI company. It has a little bit of orange, which are people that have access to the data, and a lot of magenta and blue, which is our users, users that are mostly in the visualization part of our engine. Um, if you look at Riot, it's completely different. They have a lot of olive, and olives are basically people that are prepping the data marks that go, come in memory and then analyzing them visually. So at Riot, they give access to, plat uh, they give their users platform so they can analyze game telemetry. And engineers have access, uh, product designers have access, product managers have access to platform. And you can see that it's a lot more, um, they use the, everybody's using a product. There's a, a small number of consumer of reports, we, which are basically the magenta users. 
I mean, so that was something great that we, we found out. So we could after interact with these companies differently, and we could also train them differently. So some, some of the artifacts out of this uh, research. The last point I want to show also is a cohort of users. Um, on the left, you have everybody that has used the platform for less than a year. And then we take that same cohort of users, and we look at them after a year where they're, where they're standing. And you can see that the, the ratio of persona has changed drastically for the visualization only. So the magenta on one side is 32% of the users were only using the visualization aspect of platform. A year after, that number dropped to 24. So that's 8% uh, on 32. That's 25%. Uh, change in that population. Uh, you can see that the orange has grown a lot, and the segment, the green, has grown a little bit. So um, as people learn how to use the platform, they start basically exploring other features that are present in the platform and becoming these full stack users. Um, so a little bit of you know why we do all this work. I'm a practitioner, so we do this to actually improve the product. Um, so, you know, we went in and added a new persona to our persona set, which, which was great. And we decided to uh, tailor a lot of our new cleansing and data preparation tool towards Maribet, the BI user, so that we can, you know, instill uh, some ease of use at that level so that she could uh, grasp faster these workflows that are usually uh, concentrated in the IT domain. And finally, we uh, pointed out that this new, this new user, Dave, uh, was really a, a behavioral analytic type of user, so we doubled down on that to differentiate our product even more. Uh, we added event series analytics, and we also are in the process of creating a tons of new graph. And I'll just share with I'll just share with you one of these. Uh, we're uh, integrating uh, Sankeys and some of these parallel sets at scale inside a product, so um, it's pretty dense right now. But you will will find ways to uh, simplify this data as we go forward. So thanks a lot for uh, for listening, guys. Hi, thanks for your talk. Uh, Terry Blyzeffer with uh, IBM. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious whether uh, people self-report a role in the system uh, when they log into Platfora. Do they say, you know, I'm a data analyst or I'm a data scientist, or you're just deriving that from the, da from the data? Yeah, so they, they don't self-identify. But we do have uh, user types for security reasons. And that was something like we, the telemetry is anonymized, so we don't actually have all the data about the user themselves. So this is something we would want to do in the future is um, request maybe a, a little bit broader um, uh, data uh, governance from our customers that want to share that information with us. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're not getting that. So, But it's something we're thinking of. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi, Matt Earhart, UC yeah. San Diego. Uh -huh. I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about the uh, similarity between the click streams and how where that metric comes from. The similarity, so it's a clustering algorithm that provides that to us. So we're comparing the clicks in a sequence and basically calculating from uh, with the clustering algorithm how the similarity between basically the the number of clicks and the, what is inside the click stream itself. So it's not ca taking into account the order of the clicks more than the click count itself. Um, okay. So that's something that was pointed out in the paper by our reviewers is we don't actually look at the order of the clicks. We just count the clicks. And that's something we, would, we actually would want to work on later. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. 